I'll give you a tour. You're gonna love it here. From the north to the south. Story time! Story time! Story, story time! Hey, hey, story time! Story, story time! Eh, 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 eh. Hey guys, it's Florence, and today I'm gonna be doing a story time about me being homeless, me, a homeless person on my own, homeless, homeless. No home to call your own. Living in a world so cold. She says she's gonna run away and never come back. That's runaway love. Please, Buddha Chris, do not sue me, okay? I'm so sorry. I know you're thinking, Florence, homeless, how? When? Why? To this day, I'm still trying to figure out why, because I just, I definitely don't know. But I'm gonna share all the deets. Is that word deets with you guys? I hope you like this. And if we can get this video to 200 likes, I'm gonna come up with another story time because my life is just full of fuckery. And I'm pretty sure you're figuring that out by now. So if we can get this to 200 likes, I will do another story time that will let me know you like my story time. And yep. So let's take a moment and just like appreciate life because. One day you can be a normal person, and the next second you can be homeless. Which was like my situation, which is weird because I didn't even think I was going to be homeless in like 0.2 seconds of coming back from vacation. So, I want to go ahead and explain this story. So, this video is also a collab, so after you watch this story time make sure you check out my description box and go watch her video and if you like her channel make sure you subscribe because she's also one of my winner from my collab away without further ado let's hop into the story of me being homeless i remember it like yesterday it was 2012 and i went on vacay to africa to see my family and all that i was there for one month and i had fun it was so fun so when i got back from Africa, y'all. I'm thinking my life is still normal. My auntie slapped me with the printer. No, <laughs> I'm kidding, but my auntie slapped me with this letter, y'all. It says Florence on it, and I was like, wow, like I just got here, and I'm already in some type of trouble. So this letter said Florence, right? I'm thinking it's like an early birthday present, because this was in August, and my birthday was in September, because I went to Africa in July, and I got back like August 12th, cause school started on the 15th. So here's the letter, how I went to be homeless. First, I read the letter, let me read the letter. It's four pages long, okay? And this letter was dated 9-24-2012. She wrote this while I was in Africa, and then she didn't even wait for 9-24-2012. She gave it to me 8-12-2012, it's like, you had a plan to give it to me on 924 2012 but my face just disgusted you to the point you wanted to give it to me now. Okay. The thing about my auntie is I always know when she's pregnant, so every time she's pregnant, she just escort evil to me. So here it goes. <clears throat> Y'all ready for the fuckery? Here we go. Dear Florence, it all started when your mom decided to move back to Liberia, May 2005. She wanted to give you to this Ghanaian family or take you back to Liberia. I told her no. Don't give her to a stranger. Take her home. You know there is always war. This child needs a better education. This is how you ended up with me. That was the worst mistake I've made. Worst mistake she made. I thought I was doing good, but whatever it turned into, I don't regret because you went through high school successful and you are now in college. When I had your brother, sister, and cousin, you didn't like the idea because you felt like they were taking your place. When she meant I, she said A. When I had a lot of daycare kids, I used to take your to shop, but I couldn't anymore because they left you. They left. You didn't understand this. We have a lot of spelling errors in here, so I have to. You didn't understand this. Place is getting hard. PTO meaning please turn over. Four pages. You always tell people that I don't like you, but you are wrong. 
I have been in your life from the time you were born. You always played a victim. Do you sometimes sit down and think, why this woman don't like me? Hmm. No, Patricia, I have not. Yes, I have. I do have love and care for you, but nobody like a disrespectful child. It brings disgrace to the family. First off, I'm not disrespectful to this woman. Yes, I may I'm evil, but like, I'm not even evil to her. Like, whatever she think I'm doing to her is evil. Like, she haven't seen me on 100%. Like, I'm not even evil to her. So, at this point, I don't know what she's talking about in this letter. I just came back from vacation. I was happy, and my smile dropped from 100 to 0.5. Like, what are you talking about? They didn't do nothing to you. I literally just got off the plane today. I was so sh confused. Especially when you act up everywhere. When you want us to reward you. Sorry, I can't. You will be punished for any disconduct. When I need to, to teach you how to cook and clean, you said I was treating you like a slave. You broke all of the rules I ever made. You never completed a chore. That's a lie. That's a lie. Can I put my two cent in? Okay. She was teaching me how to cook. But if I will cook the rice, I might get kicked out for reading this letter on the internet. So I have to watch like, mm. So if I was cooking the rice and it was cooked wrong, she would maybe say eat the whole rice cooker of rice. Who does that? Like a whole rice cooker for a family of 11, my household whole 11 people, I have to sit and, come, and eat that whole thing. That's evil. If you ever read the um, book, The Child Called It, that's really evil. Like, she was evil to me. You never completed a chore. Here go my three cent. That's a lie too. Like, you cannot go to bed without finishing your chore. If you go to bed, she will wake you up at 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7 in the morning and say get up and go clean. And we all completed our chores before we went to bed. So I'm so confused in this letter. Like, what? And I'm thinking, like, I just got off the plane. So what did I do? What did I do? What did I do? What did I do? But you don't realize that I was teaching you these things because in the real world, your manager is not going to keep on telling you what to do. First off, in the real world, I have never been fired from a job. And I can keep a job. Obviously, you're working. So why would a manager have to tell you what to do? Do what you're supposed to do. Do what you're scheduled to do. Okay. So I was confused. I was like, wait, 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 wait. You have to have a decent attitude towards your co-worker and boss. Because of discipline, you have grown up with the feeling that I don't like you and you have to turn to be a very bitter person. Nope, no bitterness here. For a reason best known to yourself, you always play, feel you are the victim and you need to stop feeling sorry for yourself and do better. I do not feel sorry for myself. I don't tell people not to feel sorry for me. Like, I, this sentence, I don't know where this sentence came from. I don't know if you are looking for attention or what. You're trying to get to me by separating my children. You do not like feed her at all. You always treat her different. And I'm like, wait, what are you talking about? I separate her kids how? The only separation here is like, there's three person per room and everybody is separating. What do you mean separate your kids? I don't separate your kids, okay? And I do not not like Vida. I do not like nobody. Everybody get treated the same. I don't like you, I don't like him, I don't like nobody equally. I treat everybody evil equally, so I was confused. Like, I don't like Vida. I treat her different. Okay. We she come when she comes around you. I am not saying I am perfect, but sometimes I go off when I am frustrated over you, over you. She meant your negative behavior. She says sometimes. Let's hit you with that keyword. Sometimes. Oh. Back to the letter. Even your own parents will not tolerate that. You are such a beautiful young lady. I want your beauty to be from within too. Not only ours. All these years you have spent with me, all you ever tell people is that I don't like you. Yes, I did because you did not like me. How about that, Patricia? Really? Question mark. <laughs> this lady is so funny. Why don't you stay with your royal parents where you had maids to do everything for you? So, um, can I please clarify something? I don't know why, every time something happened, this lady said, 
Why can you go back to Africa where you have maids? Okay, even when I was in Africa and we have maids, to this day we still have maids. But I don't make them do stuff for me because I can do stuff for myself. My dad hired a maid because he feel like the house needed a maid. But I don't take them in person and say, hey maid, do my hair. Hey maid, wash my ass. Hey maid, cook my food. Like, no. I even help the maid. Like, can I assist you in cooking? Can I go to the market with you? Can I make it easier for you? So I was so confused because you raised me here. We don't have maids. So why, why? Huh, huh, wait. Why did you treat it that to be with this wicked, grumpy, hateful woman? Question mark. Her and her question marks. If I were you, I wouldn't have done that. But instead, you chose the wicked woman. Why? Question mark again. Why you got all these question marks? Was I supposed to send you a reply letter? No. You always want us to do something for you, but what do you do for me or your uncle or the children? Question mark. Um. <laughs> like that's not even funny, but like who cook your meals? Who clean the house? Excuse me. Who wash the kids? When you're on dates? When you're on cruise? When you're on vacation? Um, excuse me. But I do. I refuse to do your laundry. How about that? But I do everything else. What do you mean? What do I do for you? Cry and we do your hair, girl. Wait, I was so confused that like, this letter was like, I just came off the plane, so girl, what are you talking about? I plead the fifth on everything you're telling me here. Fifth, fifth, five, single. There you go. Besides, generally, home chores, I do them too and better. If you do them too and better, if you do the chores too and better, what am I doing, girl? Let me sit on the couch and watch you do it better. Because you do it better, then I don't need to be doing it. You do it better, but then you don't because I do it and I do it great. Great is better than better. Let me know down below in the comments bar. America, all in caps, is a great land of opportunity. You are such a bright young lady. Make use of each and every one you can. The sky should be the limit. I wish you all of the best out there, but I am kindly asking you when your semester is over, could you please leave this house? I don't want to be wicked to you anymore. And I want you to succeed, to succeed, she meant, in peace and a loving environment. If you ever need help, call me. Um, excuse me! <laughs> when somebody kick you out and they say, call me if you need help, I'm never gonna call you a motherfucking black ass. Like, what you thought? It no! Call me when I have it, I will give it to you. It is the best decision. Or overall, I think that's what she meant. So we can all have peace of mind. You don't have to follow my stupid rules. I have never even cussed to you in my life, but if I was to cuss, it wouldn't be stupid. It would be something so turnt. So turnt. That's all I gotta say. She go PS Lord. This is the end of the letter, but she go PS. Even if I may die, at least my feelings were expressed. And I will go in peace. And she said, thanks, Auntie Patricia. Now let me add my two cents into how I became homeless. So I read this letter and I'm like, wait. I just got off the plane. So wait, did I do wait? Like I cannot even go away for one month and have fun in Africa and come step off the plane and then get a letter. Like I didn't even do nothing. Like, what was it? Like, you feel like I shouldn't have gotten on the plane? Like, what was it? So, after I read that letter, I was like, you know what, lady? I'm done with you. Okay, I'm going to get out your house. So, I went to the church, and I told this, my Miss Sue is this lady at the church, who I call, like, my, my first mom, because I don't even like my real mom. So, I told her, and then they looked up a homeless shelter. It was a shelter in Oakland, and then it was like, they checked and see if they had opening, and they did. So, I packed all my stuff. Yo, I packed <laughs> All my stuff, I had so many suitcases because what? I just buy stuff for no reason. And then when I got there, they're going to tell me one suitcase. I'm like, what am I supposed to do with one suitcase? So I had to take some stuff and then send some stuff back in a garage here. Well, I don't care. I'm still kicked out the house. So wait, hold my stuff. So I was moving out. But before I moved out the week prior, the church tried to convince this lady to make me stay. I was like, I don't even care. I don't even want to stay. So I don't care. So we had like an intervention in the church office with the um pastor and it was me her and my uncle so the pastor asked my auntie she was like oh you want friends at this house she was like yes i want at this house i want her gone 
So I asked my uncle, it was like, so you want phones at this house? And he go to the, oh, you know, I do not want phones gone because phones like my child. I raised her from little, you know, I just want everybody to be happy, but I have to stick to what my wife said. And I'm like, what the fake? <laughs> I'm like, um, excuse me, sir. So why was your essay necessary for you to shut it down? I was like, you see, I don't really care, okay? I'm ready to go. I don't even know why you're trying to have an intervention. Like, I made up my mind. Like, this lady, made, she wrote me that letter, and I'm like, I'm on my way. Okay, I'm bound. Bye. I'm going to my homeless shelter. Let me go. Bye. And then he was like, but I really don't want funds to go. I just want everybody to be happy. She was like, she's going. And he was like, but I have to stick with my wife. Must be nice. So anyway, so I got home that night and then a person from the church came to pick me up to take me to the homeless shelter and I'm here like dragging my suitcase. <laughs> and my uncle come up here and say, you know you don't have to leave, right? You don't have to leave. All you have to do is go downstairs and apologize to your auntie. Apologize for what? For what? For what? For what? I am not going to apologize for nothing. I didn't even do nothing. So I'm not going to apologize. For what? So that's nothing to apologize for, so therefore I'm not gonna apologize. I'm gonna take my happy old suitcase and I'm gonna leave and go to my homeless shelter. And then all my cousins was all crying like, oh, where should go? She just went in her room and closed the door. Okay, I'm leaving. Like, I don't care. So like, <laughs> my uncle was like, you don't have to go, you just have to apologize. And my other auntie from like Sacramento, she called, she was like, because at that time she kicked me and my cousin out. But her letter was just one page. So why mine had to be four? I didn't even do nothing to her. I was on vacation. My cousin was the one here. So I don't know if my cousin like stare up the pot, got in arguments with them. And she was like, well, why I'm kicking you out of me and include funds with the four page letter? Cause I didn't do nothing. I am a victim of a crime. So it's like my cousin, cause she said, you should leave after your semester is over, right? And I was like, forget the semester being over. I'm leaving right now. Like, after I read this letter, I'm gone. But my sister, my sister, my cousin waited till her semester was over. But I left, like, you are you woman gone? Goodbye. Like that. So she was still here. And everybody was like, ooh, fuck, she didn't go. And then the other auntie that I called from Sacramento, she was like, you know, your auntie just love y'all. She just stressed. She just wanted to stop acting up and apologize. I'm not apologizing for nothing because... Me, compared to other people in the world, I am a great kid. I don't go to parties. I don't drink alcohol. I don't smoke. I do not do bad stuff. Yes, I will admit, when you wasn't here, you said, don't throw a party. I did. I'm still a great kid. <laughs> I'm still a great kid. And I don't even talk back to you, because, girl, you know I be wanting to give you the business. But I respect you, but you say I'm evil. Like, mmm, evil. Like, no. So that's why I left. And then I went to the homeless shelter, and that's when I became homeless. I was homeless for a year, and then I was saving up money, and then that's when I left the homeless shelter and then transferred to Tennessee State, and I was there still. Well, I've been home, damn. So I just came back in this house last year. Last year was 2015, so from 2012 to 2015, I was homeless. I was my own parent. I did pretty good if I do say so myself. Yes. Yes. Hey. 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 <laughs> and while I was kicked out the house, here's the thing. She did not tell my parents. So my dad would call me. I was in the homeless shelter. He would call me. He would talk to me. He said, how's everything? I was like, good. You know, I'm here talking to my case manager. He was like, what's that? Like, I was like, oh, yeah, in my homeless shelter, this this thing called case manager where you go, you talk to them, you check in. You know, you have to have a job. You got to be in school. You got to pull like 75% of your paycheck and savings so you can save up to get out of here. He was like, homeless shelter? I was like, Patricia didn't tell you. Yeah, I've been kicked out for the longest, and my dad was pissed. Like, me and my dad is like this, so if you mess with me, you mess with him. It was like World War III. My dad was so mad. And then, I don't even like my mom, but my mom called my auntie like, bitch, I'm going to dog your shit because you, you kicked my daughter out, like, all that. I was like, I don't even know. I don't really need her help. I don't know why she's going ham on you. Like, I didn't even ask for her assistance. But, hey, your sister want to beat your ass for fun? Like, wait. So, yes. And guys, being homeless was the best, best, the best thing that ever happened to me. So I wouldn't trade it. I love being homeless. You know, you had a curfew to be in at six, but if you're extra good like me, my curfew was extending to two in the morning. And then that's why I went to the club one time. It was fun. So guys, that's the story about how I became homeless. 
and I hope you like this video. Make sure you give it a thumbs up if you're new to my channel. Make sure you subscribe so you don't miss any more of my videos. And love you guys so much, and I'll see you in my next video. Bye.